Hey guys, welcome back to Sky Talks Trading. My name is Sky and I'm on a quest to invest. Today's video is all about SoFi stock. And also at the end of the video, I'm going to be discussing six undervalued materials stocks, you know, just to do something a little bit different. But first of all, let's talk about SoFi stock. Shares of SoFi technologies have been quite volatile lately, considering all the hype around SoFi. The 52-week moving range was... $11.80 to $28.26, which is, yeah, a little bit of a wild ride. And the 50-day moving average was 18.020. On August 13th, SoFi reported earnings of reported sales of $237.22 million, which beat the consensus estimate of $231 million, but missed on earnings per share, which came in at a loss of 0.48 cents, down from a loss of 3 cents the year prior. But let's be clear about it. The company did report a strong second quarter result. Um, however, the company's numbers were overshadowed by management's full year guide not being lifted. This implies, of course, that SoFi expects the latter half of the year to perform under expectations. Management says they didn't raise the guide due to the government's decision to extend the student loan moratorium. And this makes sense as it will weigh heavily on the company's student loan business. That is a huge part of it, which makes sense because uh, SoFi is, you know, very popular among millennials and the younger generations. Um, and yeah, student loans kind of go hand in hand with younger people. But make no mistake, SoFi is a valuable business that produces big revenue per transaction and healthy margins. But investors are naturally a little bit concerned that a slowdown in SoFi's lending business will have a negative impact on second half operations. And, you know, that is one way to look at it, but not everyone is looking at it through that angle. Because in the grand scheme of things, you know, it is a fintech company building an all-in-one digital banking solution. And that digital banking solution is growing like wildfire. SoFi's members rose 113% in the quarter, and member numbers have been growing at an accelerated rate for the past eight quarters. That is definitely nothing to be scoffed at. And not only that, but the number of SoFi's products that those members are using also rose 123%, giving SoFi its seventh consecutive quarter of accelerating growth. And revenue shot up 74%, and margins are also improved. I see nothing but good news all signs are pointing to the reality that the SoFi app is taking the digital banking world by storm, gaining significant traction among consumers. You know, I truly believe that this thing is going to get unleashed soon. It will challenge 2250 within 15 di trading days. I, I think I'm not a financial advisor, just to let you know. So this is just for entertainment purposes and my own opinion. Um, at some point in September, I think $32 is not far-fetched. $32, that's the price prediction I'm making right now. You can call me crazy in the comments or you can agree with me. So yeah, definitely still bullish on SoFi. You know, even if after the earnings, yeah, I mean, SoFi dropped by almost a full $3 per share. But, you know, a little bit of volatility never scared me. So so, so let's move on to the other portion of this video, six undervalued materials stocks. Material stocks are a little bit of a, a tricky one at the moment. You know, after a hot start to 2021, there was obviously concerns over the different variants of different things, you know, with everything going on in the world right now. And that weighed on materials sector stocks in the past three months. In fact, over that time, the materials select sector SPDR fund, the ticker for that is XLB, has a negative total return of 2.8% compared to a positive total return of 7.2% for the SPDR S&P 500 ETF trust. So assuming the economic reopening will once again get back on track at some point, there could be some very attractive value opportunities within the materials sector to buy on the dip. You know, if you're someone who likes to buy when other people are fearful, you know, this might be good for you. So here are the six S&P 500 materials sector stocks with the lowest forward earnings multiples. Uh, that is according to Fin 
Finves. We've got Lyondell Basel Industries NV. The ticker is LYB. And this is a major US producer of petrochemicals, including olefins and polyolefins. LYB's costs are linked to natural gas prices and its selling prices are correlated to oil prices. The stock's total return in 2021 is just 9.2%, lagging both the S&P 500 and the materials sector as a whole. Its forward earnings multiple is just 6.5, lowest in the entire S&P 500 materials sector. So yeah, analysts have very high hopes for a nice rebound in the next 12 months. The average price target among the 22 analysis covering Lyondell Basel is $118. So that would be suggesting an 18% upside from current levels, which is pretty nice. Next is Mosaic Co. And the ticker is MOS. Mosaic produces and distributes crop nutrients, including phosphates and potash. Mosaic has actually booked the trend in the material sector this year and has generated a total return of 34% year to date. Even after its strong performance, the stock still has one of the lowest forward earning multiples in the sector at just 7.8. So looking ahead, analysts are expecting even more upside from Mosaic in the next 12 months. The average price target among the 19 analysts covering the stock is $39. So that would be a upside of 23.8% from the current levels. So the next company is Freeport McMoran, and the ticker for that is FCX. And FCX is the world's largest public copper producer. Like Mosaic, a strong copper market has helped Freeport generate an impressive 26.5% total return year to date. Uh, However, the stock's 9.1 forward earnings multiple suggests there is still plenty of potential valuation upside for investors. Analysts covering the stock certainly seem to be very optimistic that this rally can continue. The average price target among the 15 analysts covering Freeport is $44, and so that would be a 28.8% upside from current levels. Again, very nice. Next, we have the Dow Inc., and the ticker for that is Dow. Dow is a global chemical company that has lagged its materials, peers, and the S&P 500 so far in 2021, generating a 12% total return year to date. Value investors may like the stock's forward earnings multiples of 10, and it also has a very attractive dividend. Its dividend is 4.5%. So any dividend investors might like this one. Uh, The 20 analysts covering the stock have an average price of 68. The 20 analysts covering the stock have an average price target of $68.05, suggesting 10% upside for Dow over the next 12 months. The fifth company that we're going to talk about is CF Industries Holding, and the ticker for that is CF. CF is another material sector stock with significant exposure to the agricultural industries. The company is the largest North American producer of nitrogen fertilizers. Any gardeners out there? You know what I'm talking about. CF shares have generated a total return of around 17% this year, uh, roughly in line with the material sector as a whole. The stock's forward earnings multiple of just 10.1 might make the stock an attractive buy for value investors. Uh, The 17 analysts covering CF have an average price target of $60, suggesting 33.4% upside over the next 12 months. And last but not least, we have, well, actually kind of least because this has the lowest upside. But anyway, we have Nucor Corporation, and the ticker for that is NUE. Supply shortages have definitely sent the steel prices soaring in 2021, and steel producer Nucor has definitely been along for the ride. Nucor shares have generated a total return of 120.9% year to date, leaving all the other material stocks mentioned in the dust. Still, analysis are expecting big earnings numbers to continue for Nucor in coming quarters and its forward earnings multiple remains just 10.6. And the nine analysts covering Nucor are expecting some consolidation following the big move. The average price target is just $110, so that'll be a, a upside of 9%. So not as big as the others, but um, yeah, I know these aren't, you know, meme stocks. They're not like hot, hot uh, stocks that are going to explode. This is more for value investors. So guys, that's all. SoFi stock and, you know, six other bonus stocks. You can't be bad to that, can you? Let me know your feelings and your thoughts down below. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, have a great day.